So good afternoon. I want to share the story of the transformation of True from being very much a primary health provider to spanning the gap between primary health and tertiary health, particularly in the reproductive sexual health space. And most importantly, and really repeating a lot of what we've heard this morning, is about client-centred care and really making a smoother journey for our clients that came to us for some care. But first, the challenge. The challenge that we saw for our clients in trying to span and move through receiving reproductive sexual health services. So firstly, our general practitioners, their whole of life and healthcare approach, and their very personal relationships with their clients. But then right through to tertiary care, hospital care, providing that acute interface where it was needed. But often, with ongoing time and cost pressures, making that challenging. But if we go back and we think about the GPs again, often they need to refer on for further tests or further treatment, specialised services. But that continuum of care can be quite challenging as the client shifts and tries to find their pathway through to the hospital service or into a secondary service. Some of those challenges for the client can be access, geographical access or service gaps. It might be that they find that they've got undue waiting lists and can have to wait at times up to a year to find out what is happening with their health. It could be even the cost that's prohibitive for them to find another pathway of care. That affects everybody in that continuum of care. We think about the GPs, they've got their client at the centre of their minds and the continuum and quality of care is interrupted for their client. For the hospitals, they're needing to actually look at impact on their waiting lists as they triage and perhaps these less urgent cases are moved down. Likewise, it's ha they're having to expand their service and perhaps span things that aren't really in that acute spe spectrum, which is adding to their cost and waiting time for their clients. But what about those individuals? The individual that's worried about their health, what's happening for them? They don't have the answers quickly. For them, it is a real challenge, and maybe they have to travel miles and miles, a little bit like Glenn was just talking about, to get the service that they really need. And then we think about governments political, budget pressures. So this was the landscape that we looked at and really was putting it into perspective for us to evolve as an organisation and to innovate, particularly in the reproductive sexual health space. But first, a little bit to our background and why we saw ourselves needing to move into that secondary healthcare spectrum. True was known as Family Planning Queensland. Family Planning Queensland, as many of you would know, was formed back in the 1970s when contraception was not easily or widely available. The mission was really to provide that service and to educate the GPs in, able, in being able to deliver sound, effective contraceptive services across the state. So if you reflect back on the last 40 years, we could say that FPQ really did deliver on its mission because we know that GPs are well resourced in, in providing contraception services at this time. If we reflect too on FPQ and at that stage, as we continue to create those GPs capability in delivering that service, more and more we were overlapping with their services and we were not well integrated with the hospital system. So despite being such a well-known and familiar brand, we really had to reflect on what value are we now providing? What is it that the community still needs and what is the service gap for the consumer amongst all of that?
we saw that positioning. We saw the positioning in the secondary health space where we could truly be a provider of more complex reproductive sexual health services and in this way form a continuum of care well linked and integrated with both the primary health and the tertiary hospital system. In its essence, it means that TRUE has become and is still becoming a true secondary health provider. And as we continue on this journey, we are embarking on becoming a one-stop shop with the introduction as well of allied health within our clinical environment. Ultimately, we can provide a cost-effective service for all those clients who may have had to wait on hospital waiting lists or to go into other private models. But what about the services and how did we come up with the list of services that we're providing? Certainly, this needed a very strong collaborative approach and a regional focus. It wasn't about coming up with a whole list of services that we would put everywhere, but listening to the doctors and the hospitals where there were service gaps, where people couldn't access services, and in particular, where there were undue waiting lists. So some examples of those are listed here, and I'll talk a little bit about colposcopy. Colposcopy is a service for a more detailed examination and diagnosis where there's been an abnormal cervical screen. We have seen patients that have waited 365 days in an ONG clinic waiting to have this diagnosis made. The idea that people can, GPs can now refer directly into TRUE for a cost effective and timely service, most generally under 14 days, is a significant difference for that person and individual that's looking for that service. But it is about designing other services too where there are specific needs. More complex chronic health conditions that need a lot of time to ascertain what is the appropriate service or contraception even for some individuals. Procedural uh, contraception, which we have seen is not taken up in Australia anywhere near the same volume as in other countries around the world. We see ourselves in being able to help GPs in taking the time to deliver those more complex procedures. Likewise, we can work closely with hospitals. We can triage and look at their ONG waiting lists and treat where we can, or in some cases refer directly onto their surgical lists so that the patient again doesn't have to go through another process of assessment and more time wondering when they're going to get the treatment until they have actually got a resolution and peace of mind. But we also go beyond the service deliveries. We are also looking at access to information for our GPs and supporting GPs with fact sheets for their clients that they can download from the website. They can read them on their phones and also can fill in referral forms into our service. And of course, patients can come straight to us as well. But we're encouraging GPs to be involved in this pathway of care. Our doctors are also there for discussion of complex or specific clinical cases to help again grow the capacity and client journey and the support for those clients. To play our role effectively and to really integrate well within this health system, we did have to look carefully at establishing formal referral pathways. This has meant establishing links in communities with GPs as well as with hospitals in a number of regions. Naturally, formal agreements were needed in many cases where we had to look at clinical governance elements and referral pathways being effective and client-centred. An example of some of the more innovative ways that we're delivering services is an MOU with Ipswich Hospital where we have a pop-up colposcopy service to help them overcome the huge delay in some of the clients that have been waiting there. A little bit like Glenn was saying, we're going to where the problem is. 
in the Darling Downs, an antenatal shared care arrangement where they, the hospital had quite a burden of young women who didn't have GPs that were taking a, a partnership in that. So we are now helping the hospital in managing those women. We have a number of other MOUs in place or pending as we look at specific needs around those communities and particularly where there's waiting lists or no access. Talking about access, our focus too is now moving to rural and remote and in partnership with CheckUp, we're looking at 15 pop-ups in rural and remote Queensland where our clinic, clinicians will take that secondary reproductive health service into the bush. And I'm happy to say too that I am also a country girl having grown up in Western Queensland and to me this is really, really important to get the service where it's needed. So just to reiterate, the referral pathways for TRUE, of course the client can come straight to us, but we accept referrals from GPs. We do not want to take over their, their management of the whole of health approach for the client, and we will refer those patients back to the GP for ongoing management and management for their chronic health issues. Where we've received a client that needs to go onto a surgical list, we can refer on to their hospital lists in some cases. But likewise, we can work closely with the HHS, ONG clinics, triage those lists, treat those people on those lists at the time where possible, or refer them on so that they're quickly getting the treatment that they need from a surgical or more acute perspective. So, the transformation over the last year has not been without its challenges. And it would be odd of me not to take and talk to you about some of these in terms of how we've worked hard to overcome them. The first has been GP perception because we were, in a sense, in the primary health space and competing. We were, in really, having trained them to provide the service, still in that competing environment of basic contraception services. So we've worked hard to educate GPs everywhere that we are now a provider of the secondary health service that can be a real advantage for those clients they would have sent into the hospital waiting lists. Secondly, it's about the bespoke design of services to meet particular community needs within regions with each hospital. That takes some time to develop, particularly where the clinical governance elements, the referral pathways, the feedback to treating GPs, etc., all has to be considered within the quality of care of the patient. And thirdly, branding. A little bit perhaps the elephant in the room. So I want to share the story around the branding with you. As we moved into this community gynaecology focus, we realised that the name Family Planning did not actually span the breadth of the work that we did. When we looked, talked and interviewed numbers of young people, we found that family planning was where their grandmothers and aunties went and it would never be for me. I would not need that service. And then the other part of this is the story of True's other work. We're engaged in many other areas beyond clinical services and beyond clinical education, working in child protection, sexuality education, sexual assault counselling. So there's a number of other areas that we needed to span. We needed to find a name that was broad enough to be able to do that. It needed to be, in a sense, abstract. But then we went back. We went back and we thought about the core of our organisation's being, and it was about evidence base. It was about being true. The logo talks about our work across the lifespan, from a small seed to an older petal. We will work with you through the years. The colours depict the work that we do in the variety and diversity of communities and with the diversity of people that we serve. It's arranged in an arc. We're speaking out. 
we're sharing, we're educating, and we're promoting health for people. So I really charge you all to take that story, that change from family planning Queensland and our transformation is true, and try to share that with another 15 people. The fourth challenge was upskilling. We were asking our clinicians to take on secondary, more specialised health services. So we had to invest time and money in ensuring that the accreditation processes were completed for other skills that were being offered. CQIP accreditation for our doctors, for example, in order to be providing colposcopy. And I'm happy to say that a lot of these challenges, we're booting, we're getting there, we're passing through them and we're doing more and we're offering more as we keep going. So in summary, this is a story of an evolution of a primary health provider spanning the gap into that secondary health layer to decrease critical system gaps and to bring service and wrap it around the consumer. It's also a story of partnerships and collaboration and getting close to GPs and hospitals and their, app, their issues in order to deliver the right service at the right time, at the right cost. And it's about establishing an identity that does match our new service profile. So true, is an expert in reproductive and sexual health. And I charge you all to take action after today and either talk to us about an agreement, an MOU, or refer a client to us in the next year. And I'll check in again with you next year and see if you've done that. I also encourage you to have a look at our website and see the numbers of other services and offerings that we have as an organisation. Thank you.